Hi, my name is Suzanne LeBlanc, and I'm the Director of Clinical Relationships for the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. I'd like to thank the AANS Tumor Section for allowing me to speak about what's new with focused ultrasound for brain tumors. Now, despite advances in knowledge, the diagnosis of high-grade gliomas carries a poor prognosis. For maximum safe reception, we rely on imaging, even though we know there are areas of non-enhancing tumor, as demonstrated here in increased flare signal, that is oftentimes unresectable. And we know there's infiltration of the brain surrounding the tumor that we can't even see on imaging studies. In addition, we know that these tumors are heterogeneous in cell composition and molecular signature, which leads to resistance and recurrence. Now, focused ultrasound has the potential to enhance the effectiveness of or provide an alternative to the four pillars of cancer treatment. For surgery, it's invasive and carries risks, but it is targeted, which is good. Radiation therapy is non-invasive and targeted, but has local risks. And chemotherapies and immunotherapies are often delivered intravenously, which is non-invasive, but it's also non-targeted. Some of these medicines don't cross the blood-brain barrier, and there are significant systemic risks. So how can focused ultrasound help? Well, it's like taking a magnifying glass out in the sun and making the sun's rays converge at a focal spot on the leaf and make it catch on fire. Focused ultrasound is the same thing. We can make the beam converge at a focal spot and do many different bioeffects at that focal point. In fact, we can think of it kind of like a dial and we can make that focused ultrasound beam do different things. If we increase the power and use thermal energy, we can cause mild hyperthermia, radiation sensitization. If we use increasing power with a mechanical form of focused ultrasound, we can do blood brain barrier opening, radiation sensitization, sonodynamic therapy, and hystotripsy. So let's do blood brain barrier opening first. So, with focused ultrasound, we administer intravenous microbubbles. And in the presence of focused ultrasound, these microbubbles get bigger and smaller and open up the tight junctions along the blood brain barrier and allow the purple medicines to get through. There are numerous blood brain barrier opening clinical trials with focused ultrasound, some of which are listed here. And you can see the assortment of medications that we're trying to improve the delivery of with focused ultrasound. So there are a few systems, one of which is an MR-guided system by InsightTech, which is called the Exablate Neuro System, and that's done inside an MRI machine. One is neuro-navigated, where the focused ultrasound beam is placed in the clinic with the guidance of a previously performed MRI scan. And the Carthera device, the SonaCloud, is not image-guided at all. They put a focused ultrasound transducer implanted in the skull, and it's overlying the uh, targeted area. In this clinical trial with the Carthera device with 19 patients given monthly focused ultrasound sessions and the administration of carboplatin, they were able to successfully demonstrate blood-brain barrier opening with gadolinium enhancement after focused ultrasound underneath the site of the implanted bus transducer. They were also able to show improvement in the median progression-free survival and overall survival in patients that had successful blood-brain barrier opening disruption compared to those that didn't have it. With the Navifa system, they reported six patients where uh, the device was safe and tolerable. There was dose-dependent opening of the blood-brain barrier where you can see increased enhancement in elevated K-trans levels 30 minutes after focused ultrasound and the blood-brain barrier closed at 24 hours. They also went further in preclinical studies showing that with bus parameter settings that were more than what they used in humans, they were able to produce a statistically significant and prolonged immunostimulation effect in the tumors with elevated CD4 cells and to a lesser degree CD8 cells. With the Insight Tech machine, which is MRI guided, there were numerous reports showing that it was safe, tolerable, accurate, and reversible. In a recent report this year, uh, the uh, researchers gave fluorescein and opened the blood-brain barrier with focused ultrasound and compared the focused ultrasound parameters with the MRI scans histopathology, microbubble acoustic emissions, and fluorescence guided surgical metrics. And what they found was very interesting. And look at this figure. In areas of the tumor where there, were, there was naturally occurring contrast enhancement, there was rapid accumulation of fluorescein uh, at histopathology. In the non-enhancing tumor components naturally, there was very little fluorescein that accumulated. But in areas where they used focused ultrasound 
to open the blood-brain barrier in areas that were previously not enhancing. They confirmed with MRI scan that there was enhancement, so they successfully opened the blood-brain barrier. And at histopathology, they showed that there was elevated fluorescein in these areas, and it was almost twice the amount as in the non-enhancing tumor components. So they suggested there was significant potential to improve the spatial and pharmacologic treatment of brain tumors. Now, we can also, in addition to delivering therapeutics, we can deliver substances that can help change a glioblastoma, let's say from a cold to a hot tumor. And preclinical FUS studies have shown the ability to do this with substances such as IL-12, CAR T cells, NK92 cells, genes, and concurrent radiation therapy. In this report, they showed that blood-brain barrier opening with focused ultrasound enhanced the immune response. They were successfully able to increase the amount of delivery with focused ultrasound of anti-PD-1 antibodies, CAR T cells, and antigen-presenting cells with CXCL10. In the uh, animals that had improved delivery of these agents, they were also able to show increased survival. So with CAR T cells, there was improved delivery to the brain and improved survival, again, with focused ultrasound. So this diagram nicely summarizes their findings of improving immune activation and improved T cell killing with the increased delivery of antibodies, CAR T cells, and antigen presenting cells. Now let's shift to another mechanism of action, and that's radiation sensitization. And the advantages are that focused ultrasound could increase the efficacy and decrease the tumor resistance. It can help decrease the radiation dose necessary and the resulting side effects, and it can also decrease the ability, uh, the decrease the um, occurrence of radiation necrosis. So how do we do that? Well, with the mechanical effects of focused ultrasound, we can cause non-thermal vascular shutdown, endothelial cell death. Opening the blood-brain barrier alone may improve oxygenation and increase uh, CD8 cells and tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. With the thermal mechanism of action of focused ultrasound and mild hyperthermia, we may be able to impair DNA damage repair mechanisms, increase oxygenation and perfusion, induce cell death, and elicit an immune response. We're very excited that the first in human clinical trial with focused ultrasound and re irradiation for current GBMs is going to start in Taiwan with the Navifus machine. Another mechanism of action of focused ultrasound with slightly increasing power, but a mechanical Mechanism of action is sonodynamic therapy. And the advantage of this is to use a sonosensitizer and activate it with ultrasound, which penetrates deeper than light, to activate it. We can, with focused ultrasound, induce very precise spatial targeting and no damage to the brain. So with a sonosensitizer like 5ALA, in the presence of an ultrasound beam and microbubbles, the microbubbles can elicit a form of light, which can activate the 5ALA and cause Protoporphyrin 9 to then release reactive oxygen species and cause cellular apoptosis and cancer cell death. Numerous studies have shown the ability of focused ultrasound to elicit sonodynamic therapy with 5 ALA and fluorescein, as demonstrated in these articles. And you can see the decreased tumor progression uh, with sonodynamic therapy compared to either focused ultrasound alone or 5 ALA alone. And again, we're very excited that there are now two clinical trials involving sonodynamic therapy for the treatment of GBMs. Another mechanism of focused ultrasound using increased power with a mechanical mechanism of action is histotripsy. And the advantages are this non-thermal mechanism of action does not result in any skull heating. It causes very rapid um, induction of lesions in the brain with very precise targeting. And some early studies have also shown an immunological effect with histotripsy in different forms of cancer. So I'd like to shift gears a little bit. And remember I told you that focused ultrasound can open the blood-brain barrier to let various therapeutics inside the brain? Well, if we do that, we can also encourage the flow of analytes from in the brain to go back into the circulation. Again, a focused ultrasound enhanced liquid biopsy. And these preclinical studies have demonstrated that there is the potential to improve the quantity and quality of analytes in the peripheral blood with BDB opening and focused ultrasound. This could help in non-invasive longitudinal follow-up and distinguish progression from pseudoprogression and also provide feedback to guide precision therapy as the tumor evolves and mutates. So if you remember that first case I showed you, wouldn't it be fascinating if we could do a non-invasive targeted liquid biopsy of this area of non-enhancing tumor this hyperintense flare signal and see why is this not enhancing? 
what genetic and epigenetic changes are in there. And maybe it could help us decide if this area is more amenable to radiation therapy or sonodynamic therapy. So in ongoing focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening clinical trials, many centers are collecting uh, analytes pre and post blood brain barrier opening. And in this first in human reported results, uh, the authors report a significant increase in the amount of CFDNA after focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening. So in summary, I hope you can now appreciate how focused ultrasound is being researched with numerous mechanisms of action to help in the treatment of brain tumors uh, and glioblastomas with uh, sonodynamic therapy and hystertripsy, blood brain barrier opening, and also radiation sensitization. If you'd like more information, please visit our website at fussfoundation.org and you can see our 2020 state of the field report and our white paper from a recent GBM workshop. Thank you for your attention and have a great meeting.